Okay, good day. This is Math 130, Introduction to Statistics. I'm Professor McCauley. This is lesson number nine, Intro to Probability. Let's get to it. Today, we're going to identify a sample space and a probability experiment. We're going to identify simple events. We're going to use the fundamental counting principle to find the number of ways an event can occur. Also with the tree diagram, we're going to distinguish it between classical probability, empirical probability, and subjective probability. And we're going to find the complement of an event. So let's talk about these things. Some definitions here. A probability experiment is an action or trial through which specific results, counts, measures, or responses are obtained. An outcome is the result of a single trial of a probability experiment. A sample space is a set of all possible outcomes of a probability experiment. An event is a subset of the sample space consisting of one or more outcomes. Notice that all of these uh, lower definitions kind of build on the definitions above it so that's why it's very important for us to talk about these definitions so an elementary example suppose you throw a six-sided die the probability experiment is rolling the six-sided die that probability experiment has a sample space of six outcomes one two three four five and six a possible event is rolling an even number. An even number is a subset of the sample space. In this case, two, four, and six. A tree diagram is a visual display of all outcomes of a probability experiment uh, using branches that originate through a starting point. It may be used to find the number of outcomes in a sample space as well as individual outcomes. And they can be drawn in a number of ways. So let's do an elementary example. Let's say we uh, toss a coin and roll a six-sided die, and that's our probability experiment. And we're asked to find a tree diagram to define the sample space of the total outcomes. So our first outcome of the first part of the, um, uh, the uh, probability experiment is to toss a coin. And that coin toss gives us two outcomes heads or tails and then after we've decided one of these we roll the six-sided die and each of the first two outcomes has six corresponding outcomes for the six-sided die and we're drawing the tree in here so one two three four five six one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six and six is 12 outcomes. And so the sample space has these 12 outcomes. It'll be heads one, heads two, heads three, heads four, and then all the way through six, tails one, tails two, all the way through six. All right. So let's dismiss that. Um, uh, Definition, a simple event is an event that consists of a single outcome. The elementary example of which, which of the following events are simple events. Given the probability experiment of flipping a coin or rolling a six-sided die, getting a heads and an odd number or getting a heads and a three. Well, getting a heads and an odd number, there are actually three of those outcomes. There's heads one, there's heads uh, three and there's heads five this is not a simple event getting a heads and a three there is only one of those outcomes this one is a simple event all right moving on Fundamental counting principle, if one event can occur in M ways and a second event can, can occur in N ways, the number of ways that the two events can occur in a sequence is the product of M and N. This process can be extended to any number of events occurring in sequence. So here's an elementary example. Um, the second, <coughs> excuse me. Every morning when you get dressed, uh, you can pick from five different shirts, four different pairs of pants, and three different pairs of shoes. Discarding any kind of fashion sense, how many different outfits can you wear? 
Well, we are extending this into any number of events, and in this particular case, three events. The first event, there are five outcomes. The second event, there are four outcomes. The third event, there are three outcomes. Five times four is 20. 20 times three is 60 different outfits. And again, we are discounting any kind of fashion sense. All right. Definition of classical or theoretical probability is used when each outcome in a sample space is equally likely to occur. The classical probability of an event E is given by this. Number of outcomes in E over the number of outcomes in the sample space. Empirical or statistical probability is based on observations obtained from probability experiments. The empirical probability of event E is relative is the relative frequency of an event E. And so the probability of E is the frequency of that event over the total frequency. So let's talk about an example where we're doing empirical probability. Given the following frequency distribution of a single question from a political questionnaire, determine the empirical probability of uh, A, always, B, rarely or never. So if I'm doing the probability of always, in this particular instance, the frequency was 20 and the um, total frequency was 60. So we get one third or 0.333 as our probability. Rarely or never, and so that probability, this is part A, this is part B, probability of rarely or never, in this particular case, rarely or never. So I can have either of these two. So uh, eight and three is 11 over the total 60. So 11 over 60, that's a prime number. So if we want a decimal value of that, let's clear out of that, clear it again. 11 divided by 60 gives us 1.83, or 0.183, sorry, 0.183. And that is an example of a empirical probability. Law of large numbers as an experiment is repeated over and over. The empirical probability of an event approaches the theoretical probability of an event. And I have a quick, let's see here, um, uh, da -da 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 -da, apps. Let's try that. Let's try apps. I'm going to go easy data. Probability simulation. That's what I want right here. Zero. All right, so coin toss, we're going to do that. All right, so um, it says toss, set, data, table. And so if I hit um, my window button here, it's going to toss. And so if I flip it one time, it's 100% heads. But we know that the classical probability of a coin toss is 50-50. So if I do it again, oops, I got to hit the right button there, window, now I've got two out of 10, or two, uh, two out of two are heads, still 100% heads. Three, now it's 60% um, heads, and or 66.6 and 33.3% tails. After four, it's, it's uh, three quarters heads, one quarter tails. After five, we have three fifths heads, two fifths tails. And, but we can see, even though we've only done it five times, we're already starting to get closer to that 50-50. So if I start throwing in tens, now I threw in 10 more, I'm up to 15. That's how many times we've done it. I'm up to, looks like eight and seven. That's pretty close to 50-50. If I hit 10 again, I had, looks like tails has jumped ahead a little bit again. After 10 more, heads has gotten a little closer. And now let's go to fifth, jump by 50 each time. So 50, we're a little closer. Looks like head tails has gone ahead. After 285, 335, 435, 535. Look, we're almost close to being even. 
Let's do it a couple more times. And look, as we get those much bigger numbers closer and closer to 1,000, we get very, very close to that almost 50-50%. So the more trials we do, the closer it's going to get to the classical probability. All right. Subjective probability as a result of intuition, educated guesses, and estimate. And this is usually not the most reliable of results. You kind of have to... Uh, read the person who's giving you those results and determine whether they're reliable or not. And so, so something like that would be a um, like a stockbroker saying, I predict that uh, IBM stocks are going to fall in 2019. And I think that that's, I give it about a 75% chance of that happening. And so he's being subjective. He doesn't really have a whole lot to that. And so depending on how well you trust that particular stockbroker tells you how much you should trust his subjective probability. The range of probabilities, uh, the range of probabilities of an event E is inclusively between one and zero, or if it's given to you as a percentage between zero and 100%. A probability of zero implies that the event cannot happen. A probability of one implies that the event is certain to happen. A probability of 0.5 means that it is as likely as not for the event to happen. An event with a probability of less than 0.05 is, in most cases, considered to be an unusual event. Finally, Complement of event E is the set of all outcomes of the event in the sample space that are not included in event E. The complement of event E is denoted by this E with a little apostrophe beside it called E prime. I've also in some places seen it written as, um, so if you see the E prime, you might also see it as E with the bar over, or not A, come on, Macaulay, get with it. Um, e prime is also E bar. Um, I'm going to write it with the prime because uh, we already have X bar that does um, uh, uh, that does uh, mean. And so this is how I'm going to write it, but you may see it in the homework as E with a bar. And so all three of these are true. Um, e prime, is, the probability of E prime is equal to 1 minus the probability of E. E is then equal to 1 minus probability of E prime, and 1 should be equal to the probability of E plus the probability of E prime. Let's do a sample, an elementary example. On a given day, the chance of rain is predicted to be 60%. Then what is the chance that it will not rain on the given day? So the probability that it will not rain is equal to the probability, or to 1 is equal to 1 minus the probability that it will rain. And we know that that probability is 60%, so 0.6. So the probability that it won't rain is 0.4 or 40%, depending on how the question asks you to respond. Well, that was a lot of stuff and went pretty quick, but we are to the end. So today's Marvel fun fact of the day, Agent Coulson was only supposed to appear in Iron Man, but when there was a contract dispute with Samuel L. Jackson, the role of Agent Coulson was expanded. And as we know, he was also in um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the ABC TV story. Well, that's all I got. I'll see you later. Goodbye.